It's June 13th, 2022. And this is the Watson Weekly, your essential e-commerce digest. Rick is out of town this week, but today in our show, we have a new special edition interview with Hamad Akmal, the head of operations and global logistics for trusted sneaker marketplace GOAT. Hamad spends his days chasing fraudsters across the planet and created a seamless experience for supply chain for buyers and sellers. Today's episodes covers a few interesting topics in the world of cross-border e-commerce. How to stop fraud on marketplaces, trends in global and cross-border e-commerce, and tips to improve your cross-border e-commerce business as a brand owner. And finally, the importance of diversifying your shipping carriers. Hi, everyone. This is Rick Watson, host of the Watson Weekly Podcast, broadcasting from the Global E-Commerce Leaders Forum. Today, we talk with a true expert who comes from the trusted sneaker marketplace, GOAT. Say hello to the head of international operations and global logistics, Hamad Akmal. Hey, everyone. Uh, Great to be here, Rick. Thank you for having me. No problem. For those in the audience who may not know much about GOAT, tell me a little bit about the business. Yeah, so GOAT started as a result of a a poor experience that one of our co-founders had. Essentially, GOAT is the number one trusted sneaker marketplace on the planet. And what we do is we put sellers and buyers together. We authenticate, verify that the sneaker is authentic because there is a large fake goods market out there. And we take off millions and millions of dollars worth of fake goods every year. That's amazing. Tell me, you know, I don't want you to like, help fraudsters out there, but like, what are some of the things that people try to do that you guys stop? Yeah. So one of the things is just manu- people who are, uh, who have factories, mm. uh, Nike copies, you know, Yeezy copies that are out there and we'll put them into the marketplace. Uh, when I say marketplace, I mean like out in the ether. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they're out there and uh, people will unknowingly buy a pair and then send them to us because someone has wants to purchase it and they themselves don't know that they're fake. And so one of the things I can tell you that that is unique about these things is just things that we look at are like the font on the box, the the material the box is made of, the threading. There are so many other things, you know, involved in the shoe that we have become experts on to validate that this is indeed fake or it is indeed real. That's so fascinating. Let's get back to kind of the reason you're here. Um, You obviously came in to go to head up global logistics. Mm. What trends are you watching most closely in global e-com? So in terms of trends for what I do, one of the biggest things is just watching the price of a per kilo shipment Mm. uh, that moves across the Pacific or across the Atlantic. And now even being more attuned for flights that go from Asia to Europe because of uh, the war that's going on. Mm, And so what ends up happening is prices go up because planes have to now take longer routes and have uh, less tonnage that they take, and there are less flights available. Another thing you have to know is that a lot of planes out there that are cargo planes are registered in Russia. When they become repossessed, they're no longer available. And so capacity starts to diminish. And when Mm. capacity diminishes and demand starts to go up, prices skyrocket. And so it's just keeping a pulse on that. That's one thing. Another thing is how do we constantly ensure that we are providing our sellers and buyers with the best experience, Mm. right? If you're a seller, I want to make sure that you know that we can have someone come pick up those shoes or you can, you know, take them to a UPS store or you can just, you know, whatever is easy. You can come in and drop them off at our location if you want. And then if you're a buyer, you know, you can choose next day shipping, three day shipping, ground shipping, or whatever it is that uh, kind of fills your desire. Right. So I, I'm I'm hearing two things. Number one is sort of the price and the availability of global logistics, and second is just really obsessing about the seller and the buyer experience. Those are things that like that fills your day. Absolutely. Every day, every day we're hearing about, you know, making sure that this customer is taken care of. You know, we have a saying, every order matters, Hmm. right? And that's from the seller side, we've got to keep them happy. And on the buyer side, we've got to keep them happy to keep coming back and buying. Got it. That is really interesting. Um, If you had to advise other brands out there, something they should start doing, maybe two things that they should start doing, things they should Hmm. continue doing, and maybe something like they're doing today, but they should stop doing, like, what would you advise? Yeah, I think the first thing is for any business is to you know 
if you can at the very beginning start with DDP shipping, where when you ship to a customer, no matter where they are in the globe, when they get a delivery, it should be completely seamless, right? You shouldn't have to have a delivery person ask for payment when they deliver. So you used, you used an acronym there that I think people in the trade know, DDP. Okay. means duties. Unpack that a little bit. Sure, D DDP means duties delivered paid, right? So essentially uh, in America, we're very used to getting a delivery and never having to pay someone uh, when they deliver something to you, maybe unless it's pizza, right? right? <laughs> and that's because we have a high threshold for what we call de minimis, mm -hmm. right? So va goods valued at basically $800 or less can mm. enter the United States without any duties associated with it. And so we, uh, you know, most of the shoes that yeah. come in are valued lower than that. And so that's why when a pair of shoes show up and if they came from, you know, Malaysia or Hong Kong, they're valued lower than that. So you, you have a seamless right. experience. But we also know that buyers in other parts of the world, when they get goods from America, they're used to paying duties and taxes upon delivery. So we want them to have an American-like experience because it's, we, we just believe that it's the best experience to have, right? So that would be my first thing is mm -hmm. start off with DDP, DDP, duties delivered paid. The other thing I would say is when you're doing not just thousands, but when you do you know millions and millions of shipments like we do, you don't have the time to audit these invoices that you get from the people that are clearing your shipments. So mm. the shipping companies that are out there. The reason I bring that up is when you start to zigzag across the world with all the shipments that we do, inevitably there will be mistakes. Right. And so you need to ensure that you are auditing in some form or fashion, all of those invoices so that you know that those companies are charging you the right amount and perhaps even Customs and Border Protection or a similar authority in a, in a different country misclassified your goods mm. or, or misunderstood what you were shipping. And you are now, you know, all of a sudden you're paying 40% duty instead of 20% duty. That's fascinating. So I'm hearing two things. Number one, offering DDP up front yep. so that buyers aren't shocked and surprised. Like, hey, I ordered this thing. I thought I had already paid duties or exactly. I want to shop for a site that I know is trusted, you know, that I'm not going to be surprised later on rather than going someplace where I'm not really sure. And then second is auditing those invoices yeah. that you're getting from the shipping carriers. Yeah, not many people will have that on their That radar. seems like a hard job. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm really That's lucky. why they need your help. Exactly. I'm lucky I've got a great team of uh, trade compliance team and they they are starting to dive into this a lot more and it's not easy, right? You are literally, you know, going combing through, you know, tons of invoices and you know, we've got a great data science team as well that helps us determine kind of which are the outliers that we should actually go mm -hmm. look at based on all the data, you know, and, and it continue does, you know, it's continuous learning or, or you know, machine learning um, and using those tools to do that. And then if there was one thing that I would tell them to stop doing is, you know, it's great to have one relationship or, mm. or, or one shipping relationship with a company, whether it's you know one of the big three carriers. Yep. But I would say as you start to grow, start to diversify mm. because you will get caught at one point when that shipping company can't deliver your goods. So try to not put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, I, I think that's good advice for any business. If you have one service provider that is critical what happens when there's a hiccup exactly. or they have a labor strike or it oh, could be anything outside of anyone's control. All of those things, <laughs> right. all of those. So all we, those things will happen. We had a partner, uh, a shipping partner in Europe. They said, yeah, we can't ship today. I was like, wait, what happened? They said the roof caved in because of the heavy snow in that part of Europe. <laughs> We're like, oh, oh my. my goodness, is everybody okay? And so, yeah, everyone was fine. And then we said, okay. And so all subsequent deliveries, we switched carriers very quickly and then we're able to kind of, you know, circumnavigate that issue. Got it. No, that's that, that's so interesting. But yeah, you know, preparing like this Murphy's law is essentially what you're telling people that something's going to happen wrong and if you're diversified then you're prepared to weather the storm. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and and listen, not every uh, carrier is going to be perfect, right? But you want to mitigate your risk. You know, we just ran into a situation uh, a couple weeks ago where a carrier you know, just had kind of a hiccup in their system and we didn't have a secondary carrier in that region. Mm -hmm. And so then we immediately deployed my team over and say, go find a second carrier so that if this ever happens again, we can quickly, you know, move around that and get our packages to our customers. Yeah, no, I, I think because that buyer experience is so critical. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Cool. No. So 
a fun question, not on global e-commerce. Yeah. You work for GOAT, the most world's most trusted sneaker marketplace. So yeah. I have to ask, yeah. what's your favorite pair of sneakers? Oh my. Well, I would say the favorite pair of sneakers that I own, I will, I'll start there, are these Air Max 97's gold metallic. So when you look at them, you would ask yourself, who in the world would wear something <laughs> like this? But I wore them because it matched my wedding outfit. So I actually wore them to my wedding. That's amazing. <laughs> so What did your wife think about this? Uh, she, she, <laughs> she, my dad was more mortified than right. she was. So, um, But yeah, it worked out well. And the cool thing is all my younger cousins and all my nephews uh, gave me big props yeah. uh, for wearing those. You're like the coolest guy in the whole I'm the event. coolest uncle. You got it. Yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Cool. I really appreciate this, Hamad. Any parting words for the audience? No, I just, uh, you know, when it comes to global marketplaces, you've got to focus on both ends of that spectrum. I think too many times we think, well, we've only got to concentrate on the buyer because we've got to deliver, but or we only concentrate on the seller. There has to be a good balance between that. Yeah, no, that that is super advice. I think focusing equally and really intensely on both the buyer and seller experience is so critical in any kind of marketplace relationship. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate our time together today, Hamad, and looking forward to talking again soon. Yeah, thanks a lot, Rick. All right, thanks a lot. That's all for this week. Till next time, Watsonians. Hi, I'm Rick Watson, CEO and founder of RMW Commerce Consulting and host of the Watson Weekly Podcast, your essential e-commerce digest. Our show is produced by Citizen Racecar. Alex Brower is the producer and also wrote our theme music. The executive producer is David Hoffman. To hear new episodes of the show every Monday morning, subscribe now at rmwcommerce.com slash Watson Weekly and wherever you get your podcasts.